All right, a couple of nights in the outside of Salmon. It's a good spot. It's a little bit dusty. It's a little bit smoky, but it's beautiful out here. Um, I just don't have any internet, and I can't even go into town and get internet because Salmon sucks. Salmon strikes me as uh, one of those little corrupt towns. There's a lot of there's a lot of buildings that are closed, and they shouldn't be because probably this is a fishing and hunting and whatever town but for some reason uh salmon is missing the tourism that uh all the towns similar size and location and maybe it's just in the middle of nowhere maybe that's the problem but i have more stories to tell on salmon i'm just ready to head south because that's the only thing i can think of and if i could just get out of here Without my clutch cable breaking, <laughs> I'll be very, very happy. So let's see what happens. And we're off. Fully loaded down. Uh, shockingly, I did my uh, I did a stopwatch this morning just to see how long it takes me to break camp. And I figured it was less than an hour, but I was kind of shocked to see 45 minutes. And uh, my buddy Richard that just left yesterday afternoon, he was probably about the same time. Maybe he may have been faster than that. But yeah, we, we've got the we've got the same rhythm. I'm gonna miss Richard. Um, he's still learning how to ride his bike again after losing his leg. Which man, the, the guy's got some balls. I know that's. I would say probably most people don't ever get back on a bike after a traumatic accident like that. And, you know, to be fair, he just lost his leg. It wasn't like, he, you know, spent two years in rehab or something like that. But still, it's impressive. It's impressive that anybody gets back in the saddle so soon but yeah the, sadly i've got my uh i've got my camera rigged on the left side of the helmet and i was thinking about moving it i thought i had a uh, an extension for the camera i've got several extensions cables that i could you know put it up here put this over here in fact but uh yeah, it's not the right kind of uh, cable. It's a uh, both the both the cables I have are microphone adapters for my phone. So so I could film with my phone, but that would suck. And I could mic it in here, but I'm pretty sure that that would all suck. So yeah, it's it's uh mostly overcast this morning. And it's kind of hard to tell where the smoke is, but the smoke keeps coming in and out. It was uh, mostly clear yesterday. I didn't see hardly any smoke, but I smelled some more smoke this morning. So must must mean a, we a shifting weather pattern. Oh, wow, there's a kayak out there. I was trying to figure out what the heck that was. Just some dude sitting out in the middle of the lake in a kayak with the ducks. This is a really extraordinary lake. I bet this is something in the winter. I wonder if it ices over. We may be too far south for this to ice over, but yeah, just imagine this place in the spring or the fall with no smoke. I can imagine it. Yeah, I don't know where I'm headed, but I'm pretty sure I'm headed south. Yeah, I'm absolutely sure I'm headed south for now. I've got to get out away from salmon i don't want to go back through salmon i'm disgusted by that town <laughs> folks at the grocery store were nice but uh yeah i don't know it's it's a small depressed looking town and i'm i'm suspecting a lot of corruption in that town so somebody's running the town that is not in the town's best interest that's that's my best guess 
and that's why it looks like it's such, in such bad shape. And that's why, apparently, according to the librarian, the firefighters have stolen all the internet. Or that they're, they're taking, she didn't say stolen, she said they're taking all the internet. So I was like, oh, okay, that's why you don't have internet. Okay, I got you. Cool beans, sister. I did argue with her a little bit about it, but uh, she got very defensive and very upset. Maybe I'm just a, maybe I'm just one of those guys that creates hostility anytime I walk into a room. <laughs> I have been creating a lot of hostility the last few hundred miles, I can tell you that. But, you know, uh, yeah, I don't know what I could do about that. People have accused me of being an asshole. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? Alright, hard to pick my lines on these rocky roads. I don't like bouncing around with all this stuff on here because it bounces a whole lot more. Can you believe that? <laughs> Yeah, this would be a whole lot cooler looking if it was, uh, let's pick this outside line. This thing's pretty beat up. Saw a couple of vehicles come in yesterday. I think they were doing like eight miles an hour, which is probably appropriate given that there's very little margin for error here. I think there's a, there's a, uh, marker up here somewhere. I may have already passed it. Um... Somebody apparently rolled off the road. It could have been, you know, sometime during the winter when it's really slick and very dangerous. Probably, most likely, I would guess it's it's either somebody not paying attention up here that shouldn't have been up here, or somebody riding around on a side by side, a four wheeler or something. Because you'd be shocked how many people die on those things. Because people think there's four wheels, they're very stable, and they're not. You know, they're more stable than the three-wheelers that killed and paralyzed how many thousands of people. But, you know, every, oh, that's cool. Got, got a little deer going on this morning. I think this must be the crossing here. It's kind of looked like mule deer. Short, big ears. Hey ladies, good morning. Not hunting today, so carry on. I'm pretty sure that's where that uh, that mountain goat was when we came in the first time. I don't think I got that on film, but maybe it did. I need to go back and look at the footage. I was uh, doing the uh, hyperlapse, time lapse thing. There are some people have suggested that I should do something different there. And I have suggested, okay, as soon as I get 10% of my audience that's going to watch a hour-long ride video, 10%, 10% of my audience watching an hour-long ride video. As soon as, as soon as that comes around, I will start making hour-long ride videos. Otherwise, you get 10 minutes of the highlights. Here's a, you know, here's a bunch of frames. I guess I could slow the frames down, but even then, it's kind of like I just, I just want to show the highlights. You know, you can glimpse at the, uh, the spectacle and the beauty if you just pause and go, hmm, ah. But, you know, otherwise, you probably, until, until I figure out a way to capture the attention of 10% of my audience by by giving them the full ride video. I, I've, I've done that in the past. And when, in fact, when I first started making uh, motorcycle videos, it was uh, I, I made three minute videos and I just took the highlights. Three minute videos. Maybe an occasional four or five minute video, but most of the time it was three minutes. Just laid some music over it because that's what I could get away with in the beginning of YouTube, they did not allow long videos. I think I think it was a five-minute video, uh, five-minute limit, 
and then the other the other um, platforms I used had volume so you can only upload a 500 megabyte video so it was pretty uh, pretty slim days back then and I was just excited honestly I was excited to have some place to host my video where people would watch it so that was the big deal and that's you know I, I get all grumpy and excited about how YouTube doesn't show my stuff to not even my audience much less the rest of the world but I get all grumpy about it but I still I appreciate the fact that they that they uh, host my videos which is uh, you know can be a very expensive process and doing it well is exceedingly difficult too so doing hosting videos and sharing them is a technical process and you need lots of bandwidth you need lots of uh, you need good software compression software you need to be able to show a nice video and, and not just that you got to store it on something so all that stuff's very expensive so YouTube's making a little bit of money and they throw me a coin every now and then um, they give me a few shekels every month and in return I keep making videos and people have suggested that I put my videos somewhere else. There goes a fire plane. I guarantee you they're not landing at the airport. I guarantee you they're... Well, maybe there is an airport in town. But I guarantee you they're out searching for fire. As, as you can see, it's getting smoky down here in the valley. I noticed that yesterday coming in, too. Um, or was that yesterday or was that the day before? Yeah. Well, anyway... So yeah, three nights, two days, three nights, staying in a lovely landscape that's starting to fill with smoke. That's another reason I want to go south is it's getting smoky here. And I don't want to wake up one morning to the rangers going, hey man, you got to get out. Fire's coming up the valley. Oh, hey, thanks for the, thanks for the heads up, brother. Yeah, I wish, the, I wish my camera was on the other side. You can see some of the amazing beauty down there in the valley. Uh, and you, you might be able to see the slope of this thing. This is a hell of a slope. Yeah, that's why you gear down. I keep telling the folks that I ride with out here that have never really ridden mountains or big long steep slopes like this let your bike slow your engine down or you might boil your brakes when you lose your brakes you typically die <laughs> and this is one of those little sections look at the slope I mean it's dropping a hundred feet maybe to that next corner that's a hell of a drop it's at least 80 feet over there that is a hill of a drop so if you're if you're rolling down the hill holding on to your brakes all the way down the hill you don't give your chance to, your brakes a chance to cool off and that's kind of the concept that nobody really understands until they till they get in that situation so you're all the the heat from your brakes is transmitted through the fluid into your brake lines and if you don't have braided brake lines which is which is that's what you see on uh, race bikes and such there's the marker that I was telling you about yeah somebody somebody lost their life here apparently yeah so anyway if you're rolling down the hill you're creating all that heat from the friction of your brakes your brake pads and all that's transmitted up into your brake lines uh, because it has no chance to cool off so it's basically just like uh, taking those rubber tubes that most bikes come with those rubber tubes and heating boiling the fluid in it and that's basically what you what you're doing is you're boiling the fluid I think uh, dot four now and dot five have uh, uh, I don't think they boil as easily. I, I, I don't know, but I would say don't worry about thinking that your bike 
uh, is is boil proof your brakes are boil proof on your bike don't think that just assume that you need to use your engine to slow your motorcycle don't find out the hard way like I have a few times and luckily you know I'm dragging I'm basically I'm dragging my rear brake the, I don't know the last three or four times I've boiled my brakes I was dragging my rear brake brake just because you know I'm, I don't if you're especially on your your own gravel something like this you don't want to get too much front brake so I'm dragging my rear brake trying to slow my bike even with the engine braking so there's some slopes that are so steep that the engine is not going to slow it and that 650 is a pretty good example it had a big thumper it should have slowed the bike but on the right incline even in first gear it's not slowing the bike so i'm dragging my rear brakes down this mountain on the coast of california in the sand something mountains i can't even remember the name of it the national forest anyway golly this thing is so steep um yeah so anyway that was the last time i think i remember pulling my brakes but yeah so like i'm on my front brakes right now just g nice gentle stabs just to, just to kind of slow me down before i get to the corner uh, but if you're riding down on your brakes so you got your clutch in and you're riding down on your brakes on a on a hill like this you won't get to the bottom unless you got really good heat resistant fluid and brakes and all that stuff so yeah so don't take that chance kids boys and girls don't take that chance learn how to use your engine brakes and then you know do what I used to do in my schoolie is uh just stab the brakes that's what I would do it, it, the schoolie would freewheel it was an automatic so I'd, I'd roll down the hill and it would freewheel you know just like being in neutral and you know some of the hills i think i got up to about 85 95 miles an hour on one of the hills just by coasting and uh, yeah so what i would do to slow the bus down would just stab the brakes you know get on them really hard for 100 yards or 200 yards and back it down from 75 to 45 and then you know back before the next corner i just get on them really hard and let them cool off before the next time I got on them and that's a strategy too you could do that but riding your brakes all the way down a big hill like this even if your engine braking is really bad so maybe choose a lower gear or do like I did in the uh, in the mountains uh, Los Padres the Los Padres National Forest in the hills up there had a really steep dirt hill that I was going down no problem going up it didn't look that steep but then going down you know I'm, I'm leaning back on the bike to keep going over the handlebars it's crazy but anyway yeah I, I realized about halfway down the hill I'd lost my rear brakes that bolt there's nothing there you just you push the, the lever to the to the ground it doesn't do anything so I was like holy crap all right so I squeezed a handful of front brakes and then dropped down to the next little small switch back that I could sit there and let the damn brakes cool off. So once they cooled off, I just kept rolling down the hill. But that is our lesson in safety for today. I probably already talked about this. I just don't remember. Because I drink a lot. I drink to forget. <laughs> I drink to forget. Sometimes I forget the things that I don't really want to forget. Like what I did yesterday where my keys and my wallet are what what the password is for my Bitcoin vault I think I've got like a million and a half dollars in there but I can't remember the the passcode to it so if any guys if any of you guys uh, can uh, can crack a Bitcoin wallet digital Bitcoin wallet yeah, give me a call. Actually, it's pretty funny. I'm just bullshitting, but uh, pretty funny. There's a guy on YouTube that that's what he does. He he cracks all kinds of things, not just uh, not just Bitcoin wallets, but apparently that's one of the things he does now because there's so many people that forgot their password. And you know they bought Bitcoin when it first came out and and bought their first Bitcoin wallet shortly after. 
Bitcoin started going up, they brought, you know, they brought $500 worth of Bitcoin that's worth $5 million now. So, yeah. Kind of interesting, I think. But that's what he does. He travels around the country. I'll, uh, I'll dig up his name and uh, post a link below because it's really interesting if you're into geeky stuff like that. And, you know, he, uh, he cracks these things by... Uh, cycling power through them 